I know things you never see. You never see someone taking a shit while running at full speed. Come on, kid, get rid of some of them turds in the shit box. Welcome to the Bathroom Break Podcast with me, Rab himself. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Rab from the Bathroom Break Podcast. Just wanted to take a minute to thank you all for listening to the podcast. It's been a lot of fun to sit down with some really interesting people and shoot the shit, you know, talk all that poop and stuff. But, uh, yeah, we want to try and make this thing better for you, so we're going to need to raise some funds. If you head over to greengate.bigcartel.com, there's a donation link there. If you feel so inclined to donate to the Bathroom Break Podcast, awesome. If not, sit back and listen. We're going to talk some crap. So welcome. Welcome to the Bathroom Break Podcast. I'm your host, Rab himself, and today I have a very special guest, Michael Schultz from Fender Guitars. Thank you. What's Thank up, you for man? having me. How are you? I'm <laughs> a huge fan. Dude. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. Me always, too, man. Always. I've, I grew up on your stuff, so nice. you sitting here with me is an honor. <laughs> well, I you sitting it. here with me is an honor, Thank too, you. man. Thank Dude, you. this is incredible. <laughs> We're sitting in this uh, this little like showroom for all the uh, Fender Guitars, and uh, I'm blown away. Yeah. As we were walking through, I just saw some of the prototypes. And yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Man. We have artists in here all the time. So this is the artist showroom in, you know, Hollywood, California. So whenever we have when we're working with artists, they come through here, we talk, we, you know, we work on uh, guitar guitar designs and yeah, this is it. This is the mecca for us. Dude, it's so cool. I know yeah. we I feel like we kicked out an artist when we walked in here. Yeah, we did. Yeah. <laughs> get out of here. I really get out. This is more important. Damn it. Yeah, we got to talk about important. what you're doing yes, right now. Yes. <laughs> yeah, dude. So, um so yeah, so we're sitting in this in this showroom, but the cool thing about the showroom here is like you said artists will come in yeah. and and uh and kind of check it out and and try some things, but there's some serious history to this room right here. Yeah, apparently this room, this is the old CBS building right on Sunset and Gower, and uh, Orson Welles recorded War of the Worlds in this room, apparently. Man. So uh, That's insane. Yeah, yeah, so we can't mess with this room too much, you know, uh, we can't <laughs> knock down walls, we yeah. can hang guitars up, but... Uh, yeah, it's it's pretty interesting. I like having meetings with artists in this room because of that. Even if they don't know about the history, I just feel like there's something symbolic with something so famous happening in this out of this room. You know that yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. freaked out the whole world. And I know you know is from that to rock and roll freaking out the whole world in the fifties and yeah. 2019. I'm I'm trying to figure out how to freak out the whole world still. So yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. that's my goal. It's kind of hard here. to do nowadays. I feel like because the world is, is so freaked out. Yeah. The everyone's so sensitive that you're just like, <laughs> yeah, this is a black guitar. This is a white guitar. This is a pink guitar. Like, why has it got to be a white guitar? Like, <laughs> yeah. You're oh, like, I'm whoa, so whoa. sorry, man. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just apologize yeah, before you even start yeah, talking. Yeah, that's, that's how I live my life. <laughs> but it's really, it's really, uh, it's an amazing, uh, journey. I've, I've been here at Fender, uh, I started on Halloween of 2005, which feels like 140 years ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or so around yes. there. But, you <laughs> so know, 14 times 10, basically. Mm -hmm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> in, in Fender years, that's how it works. Yeah. yeah. So I'm about 180 years old. Damn. That's, yeah. So uh, Halloween, that's your start day. That's I wore a, a tie. Good start day. I wore a tie. And I, and <laughs> I came in, I thought, like, oh, corporate America, you, know, you got to wear a tie to work. I yeah. wore a tie. And I think everyone thought it was a costume. They're like, oh, cool. The new kid is like, he's part of this. Yeah, yeah he's into it. It's, that's awesome. That's really, really yeah, cool. Yeah, it's like so. Robert, Robert Palmer or something yeah, like that. Yeah, your, yeah, yeah. I, 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 uh, I loosened my tie. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, okay, I'm rock and roll. I made it. Might here, as here well. <laughs> You're addicted to this. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was me. Dude, that was me, so yeah. that's cool. So you've been here for 14 years. And, and like, I was wondering, like, how, so... How did you, cause you do artist relations, mm -hmm. like you do some really cool stuff where you work really closely with the artists I to do. develop some cool signature, um, you know, mm -hmm. basses or guitars or, and how did that, like, how did you kind of land in that position? Uh, you know, it's really interesting. So our corporate office was in Scottsdale, Arizona, and I'm from Phoenix, Arizona. So oh, wow. when I was finishing up college, I had to help my dad. He had a printing company. So he did the envelopes for Fender. And one day oh, nice. in the in the summer going into my senior year of college, um, I was like, oh, shoot, shit, it's coming. I'm going to have to get a job. And <laughs> yeah. like, oh, God, I'm going to have to work. I'm going I'm to like sell staplers or something. I don't know. Um, <laughs> and he asked me, he's like, you want to go to Fender? I have to drop off boxes. And so I was like, of course, we played guitar. My dad and I played guitar. Yeah. So we went to Fender, dropped off boxes. I'm like, well, if I'm going to have to work corporate, I, I want it to be here. 
and yeah. not knowing really what even corporate meant, you know, just knowing that there's offices and desks and people working. And yeah. you know, it's just, so I just assumed that's where I was going to be. And I just started bugging Fender and bugging and bugging and bugging and bugging. Um, and they finally gave me a job uh, on Halloween starting an inside sales. So I would deal with all of our, our dealers who would call and be, where's my guitar? I have a customer here who needs oh. this guitar. And I get them answers. And um, so I, I started doing that. And our artist relations department was out of Scottsdale, Arizona, which made no sense to a lot of artists because it's right. just like any relationship where, you know, it's like you could have FaceTime with someone or you could have a relationship over the internet and which one's usually more successful. So, yeah, you know, it just kind of depends on, on, uh, your, your thought process on the whole thing. But, uh, I started working with artists. I got into the artist department at Fender and I was an assistant and we, had this party in, in, in Burbank, California, which was so foreign to me at the time. And it was at Center Staging, which is a rehearsal studio space called Bass Bash. And we had all of our new basses coming out. We had all these bass players. And coincidentally, I was tasked to get uh, the party catered. And yeah. so I was like, oh, of course, I know how to do this. This yeah. is what I do. A couple pizzas. No, yeah, no, no problem. <laughs> Never done this before. So yeah. <laughs> I, go I Google LA catering. First number that pops up, I called, of course, you know, yeah. uh, due diligence. And this <laughs> woman was so cool to me and she, I forgot her name. And she was like, oh, this is awesome. Yes, I can help out and blah, 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 and blah, blah. And by the way, my neighbor's in a band. My neighbor plays guitar in a band. And I assumed everyone in LA's neighbor was in a band and played guitar in a band. Right. <laughs> and so I didn't think too much of it. And later on in the conversation, I'm like, oh, well, who's your neighbor? She said, oh, his name's Tim Armstrong. He's in Rancid. Oh, wow. I was like, wait a minute. I grew up, wait, wait a minute. Like, this is my dude. This is who I listened to in high school. My every poster in my room was Ramones and Misfits yeah. and Rancid. And I was like, I, well, he's obviously like too punk rock to have an email, but if you want to inv <laughs> send him this invite and I would love to talk to him. And so she sent him the invite and the next morning, um, I'm super green to all of this, right? Yeah. I'm sitting at my cube, my, my desk line rings. It says Armstrong Tim. Whoa. She, she, he called me because in my email to her, it had my, my, my number and he called me and I think I was just so nervous that I just said yes to everything. <laughs> oh, he's like, I'd love to work with Fender. Yes. I would love to develop a signature guitar. Yes. 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 Because yes. I, I couldn't say no to him. I couldn't, <laughs> right, you right, know, right. it's like, he's God to me. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, that's kind of how this started. You know, we developed, uh, uh, an acoustic guitar based off of his original 60s Fender acoustic that he's written all of his famous songs on and um, we, we put it out in our line 10 years ago and it's been our biggest selling acoustic signature guitar in the history of our company Damn. and uh, we've sold a ton of them and, and Tim's part of our family Tim's in here all the time he's usually in here like having lunch with you know, higher ups and who are just friends with him from him being around for so many years. Yeah. Um, and, uh, it's just, it's, it's just an incredible, it's been an incredible journey for sure. Dude. I mean, that seems so crazy. Cause like basically what I'm hearing and it, what I'm gathering from it and correct me if I'm wrong, but obviously you had the drive to go for this thing and you're thinking corporate America and, and this, you know, if this is considered corporate America, this is the best possible thing that ever would be. Yeah. <laughs> um, but just the fact that you're like, all right, I want that. And then you bug and you kind of do that to get your thing. But then there's this, there's a whole bunch of things where it's like, and, and not to sound so cheesy, but my wife always says this to me, like the universe conspires to help you oh, for sure. And like, that seems to have happened a lot through your story because it's like, oh, it just so happens to be that artist relations is right in Scottsdale. And it just so happens to be that there's this, and this is all working and you're like, this is your dream. And it's kind of right there. And then you go to Burbank and it ends up the, the lady's neighbor yeah, from a yeah, catering yeah, thing. Like totally the weird. first thing you call, like, come on, that's like, that's like, here you go. Here's the universe <laughs> handing me a gift. Yeah. And, if, and that certainly isn't the only one. I have right. even crazier ones that are like, like my dad and I were in a Beatles cover band and yeah. I, I mean, that's what we listened to growing up. My parents were from the sixties, you know, we listened to the Beatles and same thing, you know, I, I got connected to George Harrison's family and his son and I became really good friends and, you know, he's allowed me to work on projects that, his, you know, his dad's famous Fender guitars yeah. uh, over the years. So it's been, it's been truly an honor. I was in a Beatles cover band with my dad, Damn, you know, and then yeah. it, like it turns out to, 
like what your wife said, you know, it's like, I feel like just maybe, maybe just the, the energy in my head of growing up and music being my escape and putting so much focus and energy into that. And it kind of came back my way, you know? So yeah, it's, uh, it's been a trip. Yeah, man. I, like just your story is incredible. And like, you know, not to take anything away from, from how hard you've worked for it, but there's always like a sprinkle of luck involved with success like that. And I feel like you said, like you're a part of this, like Beatles cover band, and then you get involved with George Harrison and Danny Harrison. And like, I'm like, man, I want to hear more about that. Like, like it's, it's crazy because Cause I mean, uh, like I'm a, I'm a Danny Harrison fan, but obviously yeah. like, I mean, not to take anything, but George Harrison, like for me and I, and, and like, I think a lot of people and, and you think you're unique because you're like, I like George the best, yeah, but like, he's my Beatle. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, he did, he, he is the guy for me, like, listen, all four of them are insanely talented and, and proved that they could be super successful on their own because they're all just yeah. incredible musicians and so talented songwriters and all that stuff. And, and I mean, you know, I think obviously John gets like the most and then Paul and then George and then, um, Ringo, but to me, Ringo is super talented they, they and are. like, and so like, it'll be like, why I don't even, and any day of the week, one of them will go above for me and largely George is the guy that I yeah. gravitate to the me most. Too. And I think because like my wife is Indian and we went to, uh, we went to Rishikesh and we went to the ashram where the Beatles recorded a whole bunch of wow. albums and it was super fun, man. Like, like I, I was blown away. Like I, all throughout, we traveled all throughout India because her family, she still has some family mm -hmm. there. And we traveled all throughout and there was just incredible moments throughout that travel. But for me, that, and it was like me being like a fanboy of like, oh my God, I'm right here. And you know, like number nine, number yeah, nine, yeah, there yeah, was yeah. a, there was a little hut that had a number nine on it. Wow. And that was apparently where they got that from. At least that's what I gathered. Yeah. And they wrote like the Beatles cave on this wow. on this thing and it was just See, so cool george is always my favorite because I, I always feel like being a guitar player myself not not a great one but being a guitar player myself i feel like he was their like secret weapon he yeah. was their switchblade in, in a in a in a like a fight you know in a fist fight. yeah like he he would come out with the best melodies the guitar playing was just some next level his his guitar slide playing was i think he was probably most on point of maybe any artist on earth you yeah. know, and then his songwriting on top of that is just like, it's bonkers. But the the cool thing about Danny is he's really normal. Like, it's not like a, he's just like a normal person and a normal friend to me. He, and he always has been. Yeah. So, you know, at first it's, you're like, oh, yeah, man, man you look like your old man. But then yeah. after time, it's just like, oh, it's just an, he skateboards. He listens yeah. to music. He's he plays guitar. Just, yeah. just some dude who's his normal, you know, just like different circumstances. But you know, really down to earth and, and like a super good friend, you know, yeah, like that's you, so, you could call so on him cool. if you like need a shoulder, you know, for sure. I've, I have, you know, yeah. like my dad passed away also. So like I've gone through, like I've called him and be like, yo, what's like, this is a, I feel weird. This is weird. Like what, you know, and oh, I've been there. So like, yeah, you know, he's been a huge help in my life, you know, just on a, a very personal friendship level Yeah, where it takes away that like barrier oh your dad was a beetle like or the mystique of what yeah yeah just like oh shit it's just a normal friend dude yeah. you know like i mean and, that, and that's and that's awesome to hear that and i think that's kind of a testament to like you know musicianship and artistry is mm -hmm. like when it all shakes down most artist or most creative person kind of gets stripped down to the bones anyway yeah. because that's just the type of person they are so then sure. so then like you realize like yeah, he's just down to earth and cool and, and man, that's it's awesome. And it's a testament to who his dad is and who they all are and the work they've done. Cause totally. I, Cause I look at like like I was I think I was talking a little bit about it, but but I think like his dad's like kind of mission into spirituality and everything that he kind of picked up from the Indian culture and everything that, you know, he went through mm -hmm. like that, I think it would be and this is me all just you know speculating but i think it would be really tough to not be a down, down to earth grounded kid of his you know I, I mean i don't know there's there's only four of them right there's yeah. four beatles like yeah they but i mean like how earth, much like, he really focused on that for sure for sure you know? but yeah but then on the other end you can I be mean, like <laughs> yeah you're like, my dad's one of my dad's the greatest yeah my dad was in the beatles right oh <laughs> 
yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, quite yeah. different. Yeah. Forget about that. It's quite yeah, different. Yeah. But, yeah. but su- super down to earth and, and super cool. And, and, you know, Rick's been around them and, and Chris. And, you know, yeah. uh, we've spent a lot of time with them. And it's always just like, yeah. it's just like a lot of fun. You know, it's, it's, it's always a good time. It's, I've never had an experience of, of anything weird or anything like that. It's just been yeah. like normal shit, you know, it's, totally, totally normal. Yeah. And great guitar player too. Yeah. Really, really good yeah. guitar player. Like we've done videos with Danny at Fender and like, he'll just like do his thing and he's really, really good. He shreds. Yeah. You that's know? awesome. It's legitimate. Guitar I saw like player. one of the little videos where he was trying out, like, what is it? The acoustic Acu- yeah. acoustic sonic telly. Yeah. Yeah. And that was like, we just rented out East West studios where the beach boys recorded their stuff. Damn. And, we were just kind of like, yo, you know, we have a, we had a big camera crew. We're like, I guess just do your thing. Like, yeah. you know, like <laughs> just wander just, over just, there. And- just plug in and, and hit your pedals and do your thing. And you know, you you go back and watch those videos, and you're like, whoa, I, like he took that thing to space. You know, yeah, just, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and it was all natural, and he kind of just improvised a lot of it, and that just goes to show his his talent and you know the dedication that he's put into that guitar playing and music. Yeah, you know, where it's like you can't just pick up a guitar. And not yeah. and be like even half assed. Like I couldn't do that. And I've been playing for twenty something years. Yeah. Twenty six years. And I don't think I could plug in in front of a, a room full of people and just like <laughs> yeah, yeah. take this thing somewhere else and then bring it all the way back and make any sense of it. But his you can. And you're like, that's, that's, that's a natural talent, you know? Yeah. Like, it's um so it's 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 been a lot of fun. It's yeah. been an awesome journey. So like when you did get involved with with the family, like you've done some guitars, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, you've done some, some like kind of, uh, tribute guitars yeah. for George Harrison, and then you've done some custom for Danny. And mm-hmm. so I wanted to hear about that a little bit. Yeah. I mean, the first one, uh, I, I did with, um, with Danny and his manager, David, who's also one of my really good friends, um, was the Gretsch duo jet, which was the early cavern club guitar that George bought from a merchant sailor. And I think, 1960 I think it was yeah um but yeah George was just a kid and, and went up, went to this guy's house who was selling his guitar because he got his girlfriend pregnant he needed to sell his American made guitar and George was you know they were starting a band and needed a good guitar yeah. so he bought this guitar and that was the Cavern Club guitar and you know all the early Beatles stuff Man, so that's some history yeah right it was there. crazy history we um we flew the guitar first class of course, yeah, you know. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's just sitting there with some yeah, no, champagne, no, it was like. caviar, champagne, it was just seat belted in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and you know, we um, we we dissected it as, as as good as we could without you know causing any kind of yeah. you know damage or whatever. So I we, feel like I just see like doctors with like cover, like they're like doing surgery on it. You, like. you know what? The cool thing about Fender <laughs> is they don't. It's not as doctor. It's it's actually like it's it's they use like they don't even use gloves because they want that human touch yeah. to, you know, like, like to touch the wood, wood's li- a living thing. It's porous. Yeah. So they, they really, you know, if you ever go to the factory, which we should do sometimes, it's amazing. Like they're, they're like hands are on the guitar, yeah. you know, it's no, there's no gloves or anything. Yeah. And it's like a screwdriver and like a measuring thing. And yeah. you're just like, it's, it's, it's pretty bait. I couldn't do it, but like, yeah. you know, it's like, I, I was just thinking it's kind of like a Porsche compared to a Ferrari because Ferrari's like this dainty thing. My brother had one and I'm driving it like me. And then like the Porsche, you're like, this thing's meant to be driven. Oh, oh yeah. And you just like rip it around. I feel like that's like a Fender guitar. It's oh. like, it's meant to be played and it's meant to be beat and like, and you know, yeah, really used. I think there was a, um, that was the hurricane in new Orleans 15 years ago. Yeah. There was a studio that flooded and there was a seventies American seventies P base that, you know, was underwater for over a month. And, um, they, they found the base. They took all the, you know, all the hardware electronics off yeah. replaced it and good to go. <laughs> wow. Yeah. It was underwater. Wow. Yeah. 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 So <laughs> it's a testament. And I think yeah. that's why so many artists play our stuff. You yeah. know, like, Oh, I'm going to have to go on a tour. I'm going to beat the shit out of this stuff. Yeah. Man, this is the best quality. For it's, sure. You know, like you just pick up the phone and call Fender yeah. and, and have a, you know, it's just so. You're like, this thing was underwater for a month mm-hmm. and it's, and I just Sounds pretty of, good. Yeah. Fix yeah. it up and it's ready to go. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, no, we, we, uh, you know, again, the, that, that project was amazing and it's, it's, you, you forget because you get so involved with it, like the historical like significance to the songs that came out of that guitar. <sighs> Yeah. The early days of like with the band forming and um, 
yeah, we, we, we made 60 of them done by hand. Every scratch is the same. Wow. If you put them side by side, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. So, Damn. And, and Danny and his manager, David, were so cool. They, um, they were like, you know, this is so special to us as well. Let's incorporate something even, like, let's make this even more personal. And they went around, um, you know, George's home where his guitars were stored and took a guitar pick from, like, cases that had belonged to George. And each guitar came with one of George's whoa. guitar picks, and you're just like, "Whoa, yeah, like, whoa, okay." Like that's pretty. That's that, pretty amazing. It was amazing. So, yeah. and then uh, a few years later, we um, they were generous enough to allow us to um, spec out the Rosewood Telecaster from Let It Be. Yeah, and then so we did that one as well, which was uh, physically heavy and then spiritually very <laughs> heavy yeah, as well. Yeah, so yeah. It's known for being a, a very heavy guitar. Yeah, physically, it's just it weighs more than most Telecasters. But it was a very famous guitar, you know. The, they made one Telecaster for George, and then they made a Strat for Hendrix, and that was it, solid rosewood. And um, Damn. Hendrix had never, there, I don't think there was any photography or anything with him with the guitar before he passed away, and then George did let it be the rooftop performance. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's such a famous instrument. So just to be around these guitars, like from working at Fender for so many years and being obsessed with guitars for so many years i've seen so many knockoffs and copies and yeah, yeah, fake yeah. shit and pictures in magazines and all these like stories and and rumors and everything and to actually like sit there with it it's it like for me it's a religion you know it's yeah it's it's like the amount of of music that came out of this pickup this little metal pickup <laughs> yeah it's just it's it's mind bending to me yeah you know and, i mean it's crazy and it's like and not to sound cheesy to say it, but like that changed the world like mm -hmm. like a lot of the music that came from that changed the world even if it's like uh, not even an, an overall world thing like in, in you in like you're sitting in your bedroom your own like, world in your too, own yeah. world you're listening to these songs that mean so much to you and you could close your eyes and hear it and you know you could like kind of break it up and be like oh shit that's the guitar <sighs> holy shit like yeah wow it's super incredible and it's super it's a it's always like i, I never take it for granted yeah I'm, I'm forever grateful and i just bow down to it you know and working with all artists and that's from you know the beatles to you know new bands who are out there doing it now and and, and living in vans and doing their best i respect yeah. it all the same and and you know they're all out there trying to make a difference and it's i think it's super important and that's such a cool thing about working at fender is are like kind of starting at the top like that's their that's their mo that's their message we, we take care of all artists you yeah know? like we want the youngest artists playing our stuff to the oldest artists playing our stuff and we have something for everyone and it's um it's made it hard for me to ever i mean this is my only full-time job i've ever had in my life yeah you know and it's like that's it's a good deal it's, it's a good deal i <laughs> i want to complain and then i come out yeah. i wake up early and go into the office and have a then i walk in i'm like oh shit yeah, what if oh, you had shit, to go one mine. day to something else? You'd be like, I have the greatest. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah if there's ever a day, you don't, today, yeah. what the fuck? No way, no, no way. I know. As we were walking in here, man, I was saying that to Rick is like, wow, just the vibe in here. People are just like noodling around yeah. the guitar. And you're like, man, it this is funny is so too cool. because it gets so loud. Like, like they'll be testing out a new like precision bass. Yeah, and sometimes you're like, I'm trying to. I have a million emails to get through. I have a thousand things I need to do and I can't focus with this music. I'm going to go down there and scream at them. And you're like, <laughs> oh, wait a minute. I work at Fender. I can't yeah. go yell at someone for playing bass. Like, yeah, exactly. You know, so <laughs> it's, um, it's all in a day's work. Yeah, that's cool. So, so how about some of the other, um, custom guitars? Like, like, like how did you like, basically meet some of the guys that you do the work with like i heard the story about tim armstrong and then obviously danny but y you recently just did something with duff yeah and guns and roses and i i did uh and, and it's awesome duff is duff is as cool as like your cool next door neighbor yeah you know like like when we're working on this project we'll have like our our pr team like the head of our pr team will come over to me and be like yo duff just called me to thank me for like this interview i did for you guys I'm like, really? He's yeah. Like, yeah, he got my number through my email, like an email <laughs> chain. And he actually just called me to thank me. And like, that's what kind of dude he is. Yeah. So, and, and you know, it's like, we have these great relationships with these artists where yeah. we can, we can, we can have these like awesome 
opportunities to sit down with them and say, listen, you've played Fender for a long time. You've played our stuff. You, like in the old like Leo Fender mantra where he would go out and meet with like Dick Dale and, and the Balboa Pier and Dick would be blowing amps up because they were so small. And he's like, how do we make these bigger and better? Yeah. And, and Leo would go listen to the artist and then they would develop a, the Fender Showman amp, which, because, you know, Dick Dale was a showman these loud amps that could take his abuse and yeah. it's cool sitting with artists like Duff who played the gnarliest in, in the notoriously like the gnarliest band yeah, ever yeah, yeah. and the biggest stadiums on planet earth so he could sit down and tell you what works and what doesn't and it's like there's nothing do you trust like the that. dude sitting at a desk or do you trust right. him like the guy doing the guy it. actually yeah. doing <laughs> yeah. it and he's played the best and the worst of it shit i'm sure so for him to sit down with us and be like yo i need this to sound like this i need this feature to do this i need the neck to feel like this because when i'm i'm playing in front of you know 100 people or fifty thousand people like this is this is the sweet spot for me and being able to have those like really close-knit relationships where where you can you can successfully get that information into yeah. a production model that a fan could buy or not maybe not even a fan but someone who just sees that and like that's what I want to do for a living is I want to play music in front of people. Yeah. I'm going to trust what he's saying and and those specs because that works for him. Right. I don't need to like spend my career learning guessing guessing yeah. yeah i could just i trust this dude you know yeah i feel like that's invaluable to be able yeah. to sit down with with people that are that experienced that have gone through it and basically done the legwork totally. of figuring that out yeah you know and, and they're obviously so proud of it too you know like yeah if you ever look at duff's instagram like the day before we shot a video for his new base he's posting like get ready for my fender video like they're they're part of this as yeah. much as any of us are you know it's like it's as well, much like theirs. a family. Yeah, 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 for sure. And um, I always, as long as I've been here, I, I've, especially Leo Fender not being a guitar player, which is crazy. You yeah. Know? Uh, but just like a sonic genius. Um, but, and then listening to people, listening to artists and working with them. Like they were his research and development department back in the 40s yeah. and 50s, you know, before like artists were artists. They were just musicians playing in big bands or playing, you know, country or lap steel. And that was kind of it. And um, so to be able to take that into, you know, 2019, I still try to think about Leo Fender's mantra and listening to artists at all levels to figure out how to improve and, and be better and be a better, you know, partner to them. And it's um, it's awesome. Yeah. yeah. So, like, I, I, I kind of want to hear more about Leo Fender because just I actually had no idea that he wasn't a musician and he's just like he was just like sonically gifted. But yeah. like, but what made him go that direction? Like, like, how, how do you how do you if you're not a musician, how do you stumble into a situation where you're going? I'm really fascinated with this and yeah. I really want to make it better for a musician. To I don't I, I, tr I truly don't know. I know yeah. he was a, like. Back in the 40s in Fullerton, I think it was, he started Fender in 46. Okay. I think leading up to that, it was um, uh, like a radio repair or transition yeah, yeah, radios yeah. or something, mm -hmm. you know. He, um, and I think he was just really good with like, sound. oh, that and makes that was sense. His thing. It was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You know, and so, you know, his first instruments were lap steels, you know, like yeah. Hawaiian lap steels. And um, that's kind of how it started, you know. Damn. And then and from there, it was just like he made his own in a garage. And I think Fender owns it. I think they have. We have like some of the earlier earliest prototypes, which we should. Um, but then from there, it's like, well, how do you improve? And it was all yeah. about like you know improvement and and growing and then. But it's what's so crazy about it is it's the the body styles that he created back in the those days, like the Telecaster and the Stratocaster. Yeah. Like he got it right the first time, and he wasn't <laughs> a guitar player. Yeah. But like over and over, like. The Fender Precision Bass, like it's called a Precision Bass because it had frets. Before that, they were you know it was just stand yeah. up and no frets. The frets made it so you're like precise when you hit those notes. Yeah, and he got it all right the kind of the at the first time. This is a genius. It's basically. insane. <laughs> and, and it's funny. We're like, how do you develop this to be different? And it's like I think people are just like when I close. Like, you know how so many artists were like. Yeah, I was in school. I would just draw Fender headstocks in my notebook. And, yeah, yeah. And I think it's just people are, it's like, it's just one of those iconic brands that's tattooed in your head. You yeah. Know? And like, so it's, it's really cool at Fender. What they do is they just, 
every, you know, we spend so much time and, and resources on just improving, you know, and then we improve and then we work with artists or we, we work with some of the best R and D people on earth. Like there's some people here, they're so smart and like, yeah. it's, it's crazy. I, I feel like, uh, it's, it's they're like rocket scientists with guitars, you know? Yeah, for sure. And you're just like, what the? I don't even know what you're saying. <laughs> you asked me a long time ago. It sounds crazy. Yeah, and, yeah. But I can hear it and it sounds better because what you changed and what you told me you changed, like I can hear it and I'm yeah. not as sonic as a lot of, you know, other musicians in this world, you know? Yeah. Yeah, so it's 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 really really cool. Yeah, I th- I feel like it's fascinating because I you know I'm in the cameras. I mean, and mm-hmm. guitars too, but I actually am a camera guy for my day job, and um, and I feel like that sometimes. Like when you're like, I wish that it could do this, but I would have no idea how to get it from point A to point B. But then there's some brilliant person behind there going like like figuring that. Yeah, know, there's out. not even we don't even have to go to point B. It's just point A to point A minus. Yeah, you're like, what? Yeah, yeah. I didn't even know that was a thing. Okay, <laughs> I right. trust you. Do it. Sure. And then, it's just, it then they get better. back, and you're like, yes, yes, just that's like that. exactly what I was looking for. Yes, <laughs> yes. But that's what's cool too. We're this, this company. Our fender is so artist friendly. It's like yeah. artists are here all the time. Yeah. Like, you know, my coworkers laugh sometimes like Courtney loves here to see you. And you're like, what? Really? Like, I, like I didn't get him. Okay. Yeah. Oh, she's here. Okay. Yeah. Let's, let's, she stops do, in let's and, do this. Yeah. You know, yeah, and, that's awesome. Um, you know, I, it's, it's awesome to, f- to have a place where artists feel like they're at home. Like, Oh shit, I need a guitar. Yeah. I'm just going to stop my fender. I got to get you in know, there. I got to get yeah. in there. Yeah. All right, come on in. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's all good. Yeah. That's yeah. cool. And, uh, and so another amazing, uh, bass player is flea oh. and, and dude, I Flea's mean, awesome. This guitar is like, one, isn't this one of them right here? Yeah. 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 Is, yeah this is newer one. Um, right, this, yeah, this bass. Whatever yeah. Yeah. It, flea's been awesome. I actually, um, I met him through Tim Armstrong cause oh, okay. Tim and flea yeah, go yeah. way back, you know? And, um, so in, in, in that in itself is an honor when like Tim Armstrong vouches to flee about you and the work you do. You're just like very humbled, you know, I mean, it's these two iconic, you know, like, yeah, that's dudes pretty who were on my wall when I was growing up yeah. and they're like, Oh no, he's cool. You should work with Fender. You know, Fender's <laughs> cool. Um, you're like, Oh, right. Yeah. That, wow. I mean, that, that is, it, it's that heavy. Is yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's super cool. But the first base we did, let me grab it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that thing is whew, that's awesome. This is based off of Flea's um early sixties, I think sixty one jazz bass. Yeah. Uh and he's notorious for recording everything on it and he calls it his magic bass. Um he just uh, uh, so much of their music was recorded on this bass. Wow. So um yeah, so so I I asked if there would be any way I could take it down to our, our custom shop and have it specced out and, and just to make a prototype and, and hope for the best. And he was cool with it. So yeah, I, I was stunned. <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, and then, so we made a couple of samples of these bases and they, they look great. They turned out awesome. Um, and his, uh, one of his right hand, his right hand dude, hit me up he's like yo come to the studio you know flea's here doing some stuff but if you want to bring him the prototypes just to look at you know i'm like all right so i i I get to the studio with the basses i'm glad he he didn't tell me that the rest of the band was there like recording yeah because it was just me in like in like the fender truck uh and the chili peppers and and you're sitting there you're just like oh shit like okay (laughs) <laughs> like I'm glad I I'm, I'm truly didn't glad I didn't know no, no no I'm thank God I thought I was just gonna drop them off to you know Flea's right hand dude just here you go like let me yeah, know what yeah, Flea yeah. thinks and you know next thing I know I'm sitting there and and we're seeing it as far as we are you and me yeah and Flea's just playing the bass and I'm just sitting there like oh, man I wish my uh, I wish Apple had a thing where your <laughs> eyes could take pictures <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. you know because I'm not gonna pull out my phone for that shit no, no way no way you just gotta experience no way. Yeah, that. you gotta just deal with it and experience it it was it was yeah. so it's humbling because you know he is like the epitome of bass players yeah. you know I mean like just I mean there's a there's a whole bunch of incredible players of but when you say bass you think flea 
Yeah, you I mean, know, like, like Paul McCartney stinks. Yeah, yeah. You know, like he's I like, mean, dude, right. like he's like the like he's yeah, the highest like guy. even Paul McCartney, like you know, he's a singer. He's like to me, about. I'm like, yeah, he's like the singer songwriter, all these things, yeah. and and obviously one of the most famous bassists ever. But like when I just think of bass, you think of Flea. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah, that's I, what at my least for me. Me too. Yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah. And, um, <laughs> Uh, but, so 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 it was cool sitting with him and he played it and he, he said I love it, cool we're good yeah I'm like that's really that's it that's it we nailed it that's it <laughs> yeah we're good like, yeah holy shit holy shit yeah, all yeah. right all right I think I made 150 phone calls on my way from my house <laughs> yeah, yeah, from yeah, the yeah, studio yeah, to my yeah. house which is pretty close yeah I was like we did it we did it we did it and um it was amazing the bass. Uh, it won bass of the year in 2016 or 17. I think 16. Oh yeah. The bass yeah. came out in 16. I think um, so. Oh, in 2017, we got the award in Ooh. our in the you know MI world that I live in. It won bass of the year, which is a huge. Yeah. That's, that's coming from our re- retailers who are are buying them and selling them. Um, and it was just it was such a cool experience working with Flea. Yeah. You know, like they would, the, the band would be like, oh, we're you know we're on tour. We're we're gonna be in Puerto Rico. You should come do some research and development. You're like, yeah, okay. <laughs> I know I better, Fender, get I gotta there. go. <laughs> they're like, okay, go. And, um, yeah, you know, it's awesome. You know, I went, I'm, I went with them to Paris, um, a couple of years ago. It was Flea's birthday. Yeah. And they were playing three nights in Paris and they're like, you want to come? I'm like, no, I don't. Nah, I'm no, busy. I'm good. <laughs> yes, I'll be there. Yeah. 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 Uh, I will I'm swim packed. If I'm I have already to. Here. Yeah. I'm, uh, yeah. I just packed. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so, you know, they've the the Chili Peppers crews, they're awesome. They're all super cool. Yeah. Flea's super, super cool. Um, and you know, he has two daughters and I had a daughter recently. So yeah. um he, you know, I, I would go to I went to his house for his last prototype base to, you know, show it show it to him and he was yeah. into it. And his daughter was there and I told him I was having a daughter. And the dynamic changed a bit, you know, and he started giving me a lot of good advice on, on, cause he has daughters, you know, right. and, um, Duff also, Duff has two daughters and yeah. he's cool. He's like, my daughters are cool with me and I'm cool with them. And so as long as a dude comes like to pick them up for a date, no texting, no honking, they have to come knock on the door and yeah, yeah. you know, I'm like, say what's up, say what's up, but it, that's it. Yeah. You know, so they know if they're late, they're gonna have to deal with me. Yeah. It's like, ah. You know, so it's funny getting some of the best like parenting advice from like from these awesome Flea rock stars and yeah. Duff McKagan <laughs> and Ian McKay. He's like, just get Ian's like, yes, yeah, so just get ice cream and just you know, babies love ice cream. That's all the only info I'll give you. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yes, sir, okay, yeah, okay. Like, uh, coincidence. Holy I love ice cream too. I, I love I love minor threat and Fugazi too. So yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Whatever, <laughs> yeah, whatever no, you say, I'll do. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's it's just it's it's such an honor. It's such a blessing, yeah. you know, and. It's got to be trippy to kind of like be some, you know, some kid from Arizona who was thinking like, I'm going to be selling staplers yeah. to then wander into situations where you're in Paris for three days with the chili peppers yeah. and, and doing that. Yeah, like, for, for sure. It's, it's, uh, but again, I, I try to, I, I'm also married, so I, I'm humbled every day. Yes, yes. Of course, my wife's Brazilian too. <laughs> you were talking about that earlier, yeah, like yeah. you know, like try and tell her that that I'm interesting and she'll laugh. Yeah, <laughs> she would be on the floor laughing. Yeah, um, I get the same thing going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and it's of good. Course. It's good. It's you good need for it. us. Yeah. yeah, but it's it's you know also working um you know for a corporation with a lot of people. It's like you 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 have to stay humble, and if you don't, then you know, like right. you, you gotta be, be able bad. to, you got, it's got, it'll get bad and, and you've got to be able to uh, maneuver, move fast and, um, just kind of try to make everyone smile, you know? Yeah. That's kind of my thing. I, I, I try to be cool with everyone. I try yeah. to treat everyone the same, whether it's a new intern who needs help on something or flee. Right. I try to make it the answer. Yes. And if the answer is no, explain why and a solution to it, you know? Yeah. So, um, I, I, I try to stay as humbled as I can and yeah. uh, having, a, like I said, having a Brazilian wife and a baby. Yeah. It's just, yeah, I'm yeah. very humbled. And, and I think <laughs> like, um, you know, obviously some rock stars can get a little bit egocentric on some things, but I think for the most part, I, I feel like music really kind of humbles a person in, in itself. You know, I think just having to be in touch with yourself to write those songs or to be doing that, like the, you know, obviously you can get carried away. I, I read scar tissue like not that long ago. And like, it was like, Whoa, those dudes, <laughs> you know, but, but then at the same time, like, 
There was some story about how Kiedis was like at the, they were at the height of what it was and he's in some motel trying to score, you know, whatever drugs. And it's like, damn, it's so crazy to see like the juxtaposition yeah, of what's definitely. happening during those times. But then also that he came back to himself and For kind sure. of found himself through that. And I think, I think that music in itself is very grounding and, and humbling because like we were talking about earlier, you can't just pick one of these things up and just be good at it. No. You know, it's like, no. it's, there's so much effort and so much practice. And, and like we talked about earlier too, it's like, it's like right place, the right time. You yeah. know, like everything kind of has to come together. And again, though, like music is so universal and infinity and endless, you know, it could, yeah. it can be your worst enemy if you let it. It could be your best friend. It could be your religion it could be anything it's so yeah it's truly whatever you want it to be you know that's what i that's why i fucking love working at fender it's like like i know it sounds cliche like oh this is the tool to but it's true man i mean like this is a tool to express yourself it's, yeah. the, it's the tool that you could be like shit i'm like 14 year old kid like life feels weird yeah i'm in my my bedroom i punk music i yeah. make fun of it because of it and I could put my headphones on and listen. Not me. To my it. teenage years were just smooth sailing. <laughs> Didn't have any uh, no zits at all, <laughs> yeah, no braces, yeah. no all just no, worked out. It's just perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you you listen to those that that music, you know, and and, yeah. and it, it it takes you somewhere else. It takes you away from that. And then once you realize like life ain't that bad, like yeah, I was just going through weird shit because I was fourteen. Yeah. Then you could listen to that music and you have just like this different perspective, and you could look back and remember those crazy times where you're like, shit, man, I thought it was. I thought it was bad because a girl I liked didn't like her. Or I'm sorry, that didn't like me. Yeah. But now I have to pay taxes. Like, yeah. Now yeah, it's just, yeah, yeah. you know, like, you're like, that was <laughs> nothing, man. That yeah. was nothing. And now it's like, I got a mortgage and a kid, <laughs> yeah, and my yeah, kid's yeah. teething and my wife. And it's like, yeah. you know, it's, it's so funny. And music's always been there. Yeah. I was going to say that because it's like even those teenage years that are tough, but it's like right now is like that. You oh, know, yeah. like. Like when you're going through a rough time and you put on a good song that kind of either helps you have a good cry or helps you get like amped up again and be in a good place. Totally. You know? And like, and it's just amazing to kind of go on the journey of all that. And, and I was thinking of it like while you're sitting there holding that, I'm like that guitar or that, or that bass guitar is, is like responsible for some of the most amazing stuff. And totally. through, and through my childhood, like, um, you know, my age is right when like, like, like um, Blood Sugar Sex Magic for me, like that album when that that was like the first time I was turned on to the Chili Peppers, and then from there just going with them on the ride yeah. of each album after that, and being like, God damn, because it was just something so unique and different, and it was like a uh, like almost like a collaboration of all types of musical styles. Totally. And then when you said like he's he's good buds with Tim Armstrong, it's like yeah, because he's like deep it's in punk the punk, rocker. yeah, you know, and yeah, then and then in funk, and then in like rock and roll. And like jazz, jazz and all this. Yeah. If you hear him play saxophone, he's like phenomenal. You know, like yeah, he's one of he's it's so cool piano player. <laughs> like yeah, everything. You know, it's yeah. like it's it's truly incredible. And, and, and the funny thing is, because I was just thinking like musicians are so much cooler than most of us like or not, you are one but no. not but me like uh, you know i'm just like nerding out with a camera or back in the day shitting on things but but uh but you know <laughs> but you know like you're like oh so much cooler and then you think like like flea was kind of like a marching band nerd wasn't he like he wasn't he in like the high school band yeah because i think he went to was it hollywood high yeah Fairfax? like or i think yeah, hollywood, yeah, yeah. hollywood high mm -hmm. i think um I think or fairfax fairfax, fairfax. Yeah. thank you rick um, but yeah, I mean, he was also in suburbia. Like he was like, yeah. a, like a young punk rocker too, you know? And yeah. Um, but you think about like, I mean, cause, uh, the dirt just came out. Yeah. Like, uh, Tremaine directed that Motley Crue movie and, and, uh, like Tommy was like a drummer in the marching band. And you think about like these dudes who become the coolest rock stars were actually nerds before that, just like practicing and doing their thing. And they didn't like, you only see them as like these icons of music right not knowing what it took to get there and all the practice and all the effort and all that stuff well, and it's it's, it's like kind of, it's like travis barker it's yeah. same deal i i remember and and i, I you know I, i've been around travis because of tim and so he's always yeah. super cool i remember i remember some, a movie came out it was like some some like drumline movie yeah I don't. I forget the name of it, but it was about like a high school marching band, and a radio station was kind of ragging on it, like, "Oh, this is silly." And he called in. 
He said, yo, this ain't silly, man. Like, this is like some kid's life. You right. know, like that's his escape. He's playing drums. Like, yeah. how can you make fun of it? You know, <laughs> that's like, awesome. He totally called the ballot yeah, on yeah, it. And they were like, yeah. oh shit, he's right. You yeah. know? And so you think about that and it's like, maybe that, that is like, they don't have a band, you know, or, and like, they just, they have to play drums because yeah. it is just, they're, they're only, the only thing they want, the only thing they know, the only thing they think they're good at. And it's just their escape from everything else in life. And yeah, it's something to be honored, you know? It's yeah. like you, you, that's again, why I love working here. Like I would never make fun of someone if they were bad at guitar or if they thought they were bad at guitar. It's yeah. like, man, you pick it up and you try it. It's fucking hard. Yeah. You know, we have, is. we have, a, we have a, a program here at Fender called, um, um, Fender play where it's like this online subscription. And it's like, it's, it's not easy getting people to pick up a guitar at all. And it's even harder to have them like, you know, retain it. Yeah, and it's, stick through it. Yeah. I remember being young, and I just wanted to play guitar. Like that's all I ever wanted in my life is to play guitar. When my parents finally, my dad played guitar just for fun, you know. Yeah. But he had a big Rickenbacker. Oh yeah. And I'm like, dude, that's some old man stuff. I want, <laughs> I want like a Strat because of Hendrix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My parents got me a white Squire Strat with the maple neck because of there Hendrix, and I remember completely being overwhelmed with it and having and like my ADD probably got in the way a bit too, yeah. you know, and I'd get a calendar and write like tomorrow you will, when you get home from school and I was young, I think I was like seven or eight, like y you will practice for a half an hour, you know? Yeah. And I just, I remember struggling with it and it was hard. It was really, really, really hard. Yeah. And then one day it just became easier. Yeah. And then it became it easier. Starts to click. And then yeah. It was like a snowball. And now it's like, I play guitar for my daughter, you know, I, yeah. I, it's just like that's the I've played a lot of shows in my life like that's the best one ever it was when you're oh you're, yeah, yeah, yeah well baby's that's smiling at you and you're just playing yeah. acoustic guitar for her you know it's like so it's like it's whatever you want it to be it's like yeah. I said it's infinity and it's endless you know yeah music yeah. music's endless guitars are endless and you know being able to create is just it's so um it's it's a spiritual journey Dude, that's so cool. Yeah. yeah, I mean, and it is like, I mean, yeah, it, it's just cool to look at it and hear hear it that way from you too. And um, so, so what's uh, like, what what do you got going in the future? Any cool projects? I think Duff is the that guitar. Duff the came out this week. Oh, it just came it out just came week. out earlier this week, and it was it was awesome. Um, it was uh, it was kind of a nod to his his very famous Guns N' Roses bass. Yeah. Um, and we had a, uh, a Duff bass out for, uh, we've had it out for years. Um, and we just, we were like, oh, you know what, it's 2019, you guys are still out there doing it. Like, biggest bands in the world still, biggest tour still, biggest yeah. shows. It's, you know, like they didn't lose any like ounce of energy at all. You know, they're still yeah. killing it. And we're like, we should upgrade this thing. Let's, let's like, from what you've learned from your last bass to this, like give us the recipe and let's like let's make something you know and so he did and we added a a, a drop tuner on it called a hip shot tuner so you know instead of duff having to change bases to like a yeah. you know lower sound you just hit a switch and it drops it automatically Damn. really cool shit it's stuff that like that's like, rad. the only way you would know again like, yeah hip shots have been around for a minute but like hearing duff say i need this it's like well Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. You do need it. Like, <laughs> yeah, if you're yeah. telling me you need it, you people need it. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, and you know, just upgrading, upgrading the electronics on it, making it, you know, what what it would be now if 2019. And it's so yeah, that came out early, earlier this week. It was huge success. We've been celebrating all week here. And yeah. there, it's like there's a buzz in the building. Whenever we do a signature project, um, you know, uh, it's always like. Yeah, our phones kind of light up more. They're all always lit up, but it's just a little bit crazier when yeah. signature projects come out. And you know, now with social media, artists all you can see how excited they are by sharing it, and they're like stoked on it. And yeah, being involved, I think the way and I always I have always said this, like having these kinds of relationships that the Fender that Fender has with artists, it translates. Like you can truly see that it's not some marketing gimmicky thing that like yeah artists are sitting in here no joke you'll see you, you saw our artist sitting in here right. you know like <laughs> yeah when we walked it's in and we had to kick him out so we could do this <laughs> yeah they're here all the time you know it's like they're here working they're here like yeah they'll come pick up a guitar and they'll come back and be like i love it you know it'd be rad is if we put this kind of pickup in here and had this switch do this instead 
Yeah. And you're like, huh, that sounds kind of easy. Why didn't I think of that? Right. And do it. And then it turns into something. And you know, it's, yeah. it's like, that's what this place is here for. And I always tell artists like, this is as much my home as it is yours. Yeah. They're welcome here as, you know, like this place is yours. You know? Yeah. Um, that's incredible. Cause awesome. I, I was thinking about it and not to rag on like camera, you know, um, makers, but like, we'll do that. Like we'll be on set sometimes and like the new, you know, Alexa or the new like Sony or the new Canon will come out and immediately like an operator is like, Oh, why does it do that? Why? I wish it did this or wish it did that. And all this. it's like, because it's just being made in a factory over there. There's no connection yeah. with, you know, and I'm sure there is to some degree, but maybe like the top of the top get totally. to sit in on that meeting. But you think like just the everyday person, the everyday person that's like, uh, <laughs> the everyday person that's just using this camera is like, you don't get your input. So maybe you only have a little bit of input and you, and there's, there's so many different things that would, would make it just more user friendly. Yeah, and definitely. just the fact that you guys do that on a regular basis is so cool to, to have that, that collaboration and that connection with, with artists and, and yourself. And, and just to know that most people here are musicians. Yeah. Cause like I said, walk through and it's just like this mini concert going on. Even if they're, and you can hear it right now, like it's yeah. jamming out there. I have headphones <laughs> on. I can hear it. And, yeah. but even if they're not musicians, like they, they're into music. Yeah. You know, like they, they, give cause I'm shit. more like that. Like I, yeah. I play a little guitar, but I would never, it's like, if you surf, like I surf a little bit too, but in front of a surfer, I would never say I surf. Yeah, definitely. You know, yeah, like, yeah. You like, like shit all of a sudden. Yeah. Know, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I wouldn't dare pick up like a, a guitar <laughs> in front of some people that I work with. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Who was it? I think it was like Gary Clark Jr. I think <laughs> yeah. it was. Oh dude, by the way, that new album. Is, is, that, he, is he, is he Fender? No. Oh, okay. No, he's, yeah. he's another yeah, company. Cause, cause, uh, he plays our amps though. He plays our amps. Okay, right. And, 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 and his crew, his his management, his, they're all, they've always been really good to us. Yeah. But he, where, I think it was Gary Clark. Someone handed me a guitar in front of him and I was just like, oh, <laughs> fuck no. Oh, no, 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 no. Cool, guitar. I'm, I, I'm a decent guitar player, but like, <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to even... Tr- I'm not even gonna try, man. Yeah. There's no way. No There's way. No way. Yeah. Dude. I mean, I was just. I've been listening to his new album a lot. That's it's really good. Awesome, it's really, yeah. really good. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, that is definitely a dude that I would be uh, like, "What's this thing here? Yeah, Get I, it I out of here." I would be like, "Yeah, my hand's broken today." And <laughs> oh, jeez, carpal tunnel. Yeah, that cramped up right now. It's really weird. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I wouldn't. Would definitely wouldn't do that. But, um, but yeah, so cool that that you guys, um, you know, just are so focused on the artist. Yeah. I, I mean, there are. are our bloodline you know i without without and I, I again i'll go back to the the leo fender mantra of like the only way to improve is by working with the people who are using these things every day you know yeah so like we're we're on man my phone is 24 oh no hold on 25 8 it's like 25 hours a day, eight days a week. My yeah. phone is on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. I think for a couple of days around the holidays, it gets kind of quiet. Oh, yeah, yeah. Otherwise, it's oh, just, man. And you're like, you know, I'm going to take some time off and, and go. I'm going to go on a trip. I'm going to Mexico. Yeah. And you know what? I'm going to let them all Instagram. I'm, I'm going to be out of town. If, you know, if your guitar, guitar's on fire, let it burn. No emergency is going to take away from, from my trip. It and burn. it's just like everything t- to me is an artist emergency because you know i just i'm so passionate and yeah. i think our whole company is it's it's, yeah. it's a cultural thing here where it's just like service 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 these artists service musicians yeah make it easier for them make their lives easier make them you know come back to us and and want to help and be part of this family and then next thing you know duff mckagan's you know texting you being so stoked about how this project came out and yeah how he's supporting it and it's like man you see his wife commenting too like yeah, yeah. it's the baddest ass bass ever and you're like yes yes yes, yes. we did it yeah if she's stoked <laughs> on it we won this yeah yeah good, yeah we had Hell a good yeah. day because she's yeah. actually hearing the real stuff yeah yeah because you, you know, know she i'm sure <laughs> like, she, you, you, you know, could be out there like yeah great job guys and like uh but seriously yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like <laughs> well we won yeah to me that's validation yeah for sure. heck yeah. yeah absolutely dude so cool well thanks so much for coming on the bathroom thank you guys yeah man this has been awesome yeah I really appreciate it. This is rad. Yeah, yeah. cool. Thanks, dude. Of course. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs>